welcome to optics and modern physics course i am dr deepti kulkarni and i am working as assistant professor at kits college of engineering kolhapur today we will discuss first unit interference diffraction and polarization and we'll see first lesson of that unit that is interference due to uniform thin film so objective of this unit is to study phenomenon of light like interference diffraction and polarization we will also derive equations for bright and dark fringes due to interference of light through thin films we will discuss diffraction grating its theory and applications and we will expl uh, we will see the concept of double refraction optical activity and their engineering applications in this particular unit in this lesson we will discuss concept of interference of light in brief and we will derive equations for bright and dark fringes in thin film interference so basically we all know that light is an electromagnetic wave as you can see here uh it has electric field vector and magnetic field vector and both these electric and magnetic fields they are uh, oscillating in mutually perpendicular directions and propagating in third perpendicular direction so we all know that light is an electromagnetic wave uh there are certain fundamental properties of light we all know that light always travels in a straight line so it is called as a rectilinear propagation it shows reflection refraction interference diffraction polarization dispersion scattering and what not so basically we'll see what is meant by interference interference can be explained by superposition principle so we know that when two or more waves they overlap in space the resulting disturbance that means the amplitude of that disturbance is equal to the vector sum of individual disturbances that is individual amplitudes so here in we can see this one wave and we will show another simultaneous wave now these two waves they interfere with each other and the resultant wave which is shown in green color it is the vector sum of these two waves so here as you can see this particular resultant wave which is shown in green color this wave has greater amplitude than uh, the amplitudes of uh, interfering waves so here you can see uh, this particular resultant wave okay and this particular interference is called as a constructive interference okay and then there is another type of interference which is called as a destructive interference so in destructive interference these two waves they are out of phase with each other so you can see here so these two waves they are uh, out of phase with each other so you can see here this is one wave which is uh, shown in blue color then there is this another wave which is shown in red color so this red colored wave it is completely out of phase with this first wave and hence the resultant wave it is having slightly uh, it is having lower amplitude than the participating wave so this type of interference is called as a destructive interference so these are the two types of interference based on the phase difference and the resultant amplitude so these two types of interference they are based on uh, their amplitudes of resultant wave and this amplitude depends on the uh, phase difference between uh, participating wave we observe this particular interference in young's double slit experiment so you can see here there are two slits these two slits acts as a two sources when a light is incident on these two slits these two slits separate the wave front you can see separate wave fronts are generated so incident wave front gets divided into two wave fronts so it can be more clear in this particular diagram so you can see here this particular wave front it gets divided by these two slits and then these two wave fronts they get interfere with each other and you can see this interference pattern as alternate bright and dark fringes so this particular interference is obtained due to division of wave front so this is one method by which we can obtain interference there is another method 
by which we can obtain interference but before that let's uh, see this question so this is the reflection spot for you what are the conditions to obtain sharp interference pattern you can pause the video and you will write down or list down the conditions to obtain sharp interference pattern i hope you have listed all the points so first and foremost is the sources must be coherent and monochromatic then only we can get clear and sharp interference pattern second condition is two interfering waves must be in the same state of polarization so if we use plane polarized light and they are in the same state of polarization we get clear interference pattern the two waves must be of same amplitude the two sources the source must be narrow source the two sources must be close to each other that means the separation between two sources must be small and lastly the distance between source and screen must be large so these are the conditions to obtain sharp or clear interference fringes so as i told you uh, we can obtain interference due to division of wavefront so young's double slit experiment is one of the example we have seen that in that experiment the incident wavefront gets divided into two wavefronts and then we can obtain interference uh, from these uh, two wavefronts when they get interfere with each other and this particular interference is called as a interference by division of wavefront so this is one type based on the methods to obtain the interference now there is another method by which you can obtain the interference and that method is nothing but division of amplitude so first of all i will tell you how this division of amplitude takes place if we consider a particular surface like this when light is incident on this surface what happen part of light gets reflected part of light gets refracted this part of light get reflected and refracted that means here the incident amplitude it gets divided into amplitude of reflected and refracted ray so here the amplitude a it is addition of a1 and a2 if we neglect absorbance now this is medium so from this medium from this point again this refracted ray reach at the other end of this particular medium and then from this point it again shows reflection in the same medium again it goes uh, it gets uh, refracted into first medium now these two rays we exp we suppose that these two rays they get interfere with each other at infinite distance and we get interference pattern so this way by division of amplitude we can obtain interference pattern of these two rays so this is another method by which we can obtain interference and this method is called as a division of amplitude so when the beam is incident on a plane surface it is partially reflected and partially refracted so the intensity of reflected light is less than incident light so it is called as a division of amplitude and this particular interference we can obtain in thin films so it is used in thin film interference the simple or day-to-day uh, uh, -day examples for this thin film interference is the colored fringe pattern that we observe on soap bubbles the colored fringe pattern that we observe on oil films that spreads on the road generally in rainy days we observe those particular colored fringe pattern so these are the examples of interference due to thin film so basically thin film is a very thin layer of micrometer or smaller uh, size and when the light gets re uh, takes multiple reflections and refractions within that thin film we can obtain interference pattern so let's discuss this interference due to thin film so thin film can be of uh, different types we can have a uniform thickness thin film we can have a non uniform uh, thickness thin film so let's first consider a uniform thickness thin film so consider this is the thin film okay the thin film has thickness say small t the refractive index of this thin film is say mu now these are the two boundaries or two surfaces of this thin film when 
a ray AB is incident on this thin film. What happened? It gets partially reflected and partially refracted. So, ray gets ref reflected along BE and it gets refracted along BC. Again at point C what happened? It undergoes partial reflection and refraction. As we are not interested in this refracted system, let us consider only this ray that is CD within the thin film. Now again at point D what happened? The ray gets refracted into first medium and get reflected into the thin film. So at point D again the ray gets refracted into first medium along direction DI. Right? Now this ray BE and DI they are parallel to each other but they are not normal to the surface and hence there is some path difference between this ray BE and DI. To find out path difference between this parallel rays, we have to draw normal from point D on ray B E. Okay. So, let us draw some construction or let us make some constructions to find out the path difference between this ray B E and D I. So, let us draw normal C F. C F is equal to thickness of the thin film. So, C F is equal to T that is thickness of the thin film. Let us draw normal DG to find out path difference and then I have shown this normal at incidence, okay, so that we can define angles. Now, here this is angle of incidence, this is angle of refraction, being alternate angle, this angle is also angle of refraction say R. So, this is angle I, this is angle R, this is angle R. Since it is incidence angle, this is again angle of reflection which is same as that of incidence angle, so R. Now, this angle is I, that means angle of reflection is also I and hence this angle is I itself. So, in this, using this particular diagram, we may say that path difference between ray BE and DI is just BG. But BG is the extra path that is covered or travelled by the ray BE and meanwhile this ray DI has covered path of BC plus CD and that too in a medium of refractive index mu. So now path difference we may write as path difference we may write as mu into BC path difference we may write as mu since we have to consider refractive index BC plus CD minus BG. But again this ray BE it is reflected from the denser medium. So, we have to add a small path difference of lambda by 2 to this BG path difference. So, the path difference equation now becomes BC plus CD into mu minus BG minus lambda by 2. So, path difference equation becomes mu into BC plus CD minus BG since we have put it in bracket plus lambda by 2. So, this is our path difference equation. Now, from this equation itself we cannot find out actually path difference. So, we have to convert this equation into measurable quantities. Just by looking at interference we cannot uh, have the values for BC, CD and BG. So, we have to convert it into measurable quantities or write in the form of measurable quantities. So, we have to find out expressions for BC, CD and BG. To find out expression for BC and CD, we have to consider these triangles, triangle BFC and triangle DFC. So, let us first consider triangle BF. To find out this BC and CD, we have to consider triangle BFC, this triangle BFC and triangle DFC. So, first of all consider triangle BFC. In this triangle BFC, if we want expression for BC, this is angle R that we know. We know this CF is equal to, CF is equal to T that is thick, thickness of the thin film and this is angle R. So, we will take cos R cos R is equal to adjacent side that is CF 
upon upon hypotenuse that is BC. We want expression for BC. So, BC is equal to CF upon cos R and CF is thickness. So, it is T upon cos R. Similarly, in triangle DFC, again cos R is equal to this CF upon CD. So, CD is equal to CF upon cos R that is T upon cos R. So, it is also equal to CD. So, in this particular, using this particular geometry, uh, we can say that BC is equal to CD, BC is equal to CD is equal to T by cos R. So, here we have got this equation from geometry that BC is equal to CD is equal to FC by cos R that is equal to T by cos R. Now, next we want is to, uh, to find out expression for BG. Now, from again using this particular triangle that is BGD, in this triangle this is angle I, we want expression for BG. So, let us consider sin I. So, sin I is equal to BG upon hypotenuse that is BD. Right? So, BG is equal to BD sin I. But then what is BD? BD is equal to BF plus FD. So, BD is equal to BF plus FD. And then we have to find out expression for this BF and FD by using again the same triangles that is triangle BFC and triangle DFC. Since we want expression for BF and FD and we know that CF is equal to T that is thickness, let us consider sin R is equal to BF upon BC. So, BF is equal to BC sin R and BC is equal to from this equation, BC is equal to T by cos R. So, let us put here BC is equal to T upon cos R into sin R. You may write it as a T tan R, fine, but I will keep this as it is T sin R upon cos R. Now, putting this in BG equation, BG is equal to BF plus FD, that means T sin R upon cos R plus T sin R upon cos R, that is 2 T sin R upon cos R into this sin I. So, BF plus FD, 2 into this, that is 2 into 2 into T sin R upon cos R into this sin I into, now I want this, uh, in this expression I want to add mu. So, I will multiply and divide by sin R. So, that sin I by sin R I can write as mu. So, let us multiply and divide by sin R. Then this sin R by, sorry, sin I by sin R is nothing but mu that is refractive index. So, we can just replace this sin I by sin R as mu in this equation to as it is T as it is sin R into sin R that is sin square R upon cos R. So, our expression for BG is now ready that is 2 mu T sin square R upon cos R. So, let us now put expression for BG, BC, CD into this path difference equation. So, we have got, uh, so, so we got, uh, get equation as delta is equal to mu into bc plus cd that is t cos r plus t cos r that is 2 t cos r. So, 2 mu t upon cos r. 2 mu t cos r minus 2 mu t sin square r upon cos r. So, we can take this 2 mu t cos r common and then it is 1 minus sin square r. So, now we have got expression for bg. Let us put all these e expressions for B, C, C, D and B, G into this equation number 1. So, delta that is path difference is equal to mu into B, C, T by cos R plus C, D, T by cos R minus B, G is 2 mu T sin square R upon cos R minus lambda by 2. So, it is equal to 2 mu t 
अपॉन कॉस आर माइनस टू म्यू टी साइन स्क्वेर आर अपॉन कॉस आर माइनस लैमडा बाई टू सो इन दिस इक्वेशन वी कैन टेक दिस टू म्यू टी अपॉन कॉस आर टू म्यू टी अपॉन कॉस आर कॉमन फ्रॉम दिस फर्स्ट टू टर्म्स सो वेन वी टेक दीज टू टर्म्स कॉमन The equation that we get is if we take two mu t cos are common first term in first term only one remain minus sine square r. So I will write this equation delta that is path difference is equal to two mu t upon cos r into one minus sine square r minus lambda by And hence delta is equal to now one minus sine square r is cos square r one cos r gets cancelled out and we get equation two mu t cos r minus lambda by two. This is equation for path difference between this parallel rays that get interfere with each other. And we know that the condition for interference bright fringe is path difference when it is equal to n lambda we get condition for bright. When this path difference is equal to n minus one half into lambda, we get condition for dark. So let's write those equations for bright and dark. So when it is equal to n lambda, we get condition for bright. So for constructive interference, that is for maxima, this two mu t taking lambda by two on other side, two mu t cos r is equal to n plus minus one half into lambda. If we take lambda by two on the other side. And for destructive interference, as we know, this path difference is equal to n plus minus one half into lambda. We can choose minus sign because this plus or minus just tells us the direction, whether it is on left side or right side of central mag uh, central fringe. So uh, we choose minus one half into lambda, and then lambda by two lambda by two gets cancelled out. So as I have shown here, I have just chosen minus one half into lambda. So n lambda minus lambda by two lambda by two lambda by two gets cancelled out, and final equation for dark is two mu t cos r is equal to n lambda. So you these equations can be used to find out the uh, find out the conditions for bright and dark fringes. If we know the angle of refraction. if we know the thickness if we know the refractive index of the thin film if we know the wavelength of incident light we can find out which ordered of which order fringe will be dark fringe we can also find out the total number of dark fringes by using this equation uh, we can find out if we know if we know wavelength if we know uh, the order of dark fringe if we measure the angle of refraction we know refractive index then we can find out thickness of thin film easily and we get more accurate uh, thickness of thin film because this interference technique it is very sensitive technique so we get accurate thickness of thin film with the help of this particular technique uh, as i told you there are thin films which which are of uh, uh, uniform thickness or they might be of non uniform thickness we have seen one case that is of uniform thickness uh, we will see different uh, case that is uh, thin film with wedge shape uh or wave shaped thin film in our next lecture uh, so thank you so much